What recovery? Most metropolitan areas still losing jobs. The recovery remains jobless for most of the nation, with only 16 of 384 metro areas showing job gains in the past year. According to a new adversity index data for February from Moody's Economy dot com. Of the nation's 384 metro areas, 205 had begun to recover, or 53 percent, according to the February Adversity Index. That's up 185 metro areas in January, or 48 percent. But the gains have been confined to manufacturing and housing, not employment. Moreover, the only areas showing jobs growth are low population areas. Only 4% of the total showing job gains in the three month period ending February 2010 compared with the same period a year earlier. Ocean City, New Jersey up 5%. Kennewick, Richland, Pasco, Washington 3.1%. Bloomington, Indiana, 2.1. Jacksonville, North Carolina, 1.8. Bismarck, North Dakota, 1.6. Morgantown, West Virginia, 1.1. College Station, Bryan, Texas, 1.0. Warner Robins, Georgia, 0 0.6. Barnstable, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, 0 0.6, State College, Pennsylvania, 0 0.5, Lawton, Oklahoma, 0 0.5, Yakima, Washington, 0 0.4, Hanford, Corcoran, California, 0 0.1, and the largest of those areas have only approximately 300,000 people. The 20 largest metro areas all show jobs loss from a year earlier. New York, White Plains, Wayne, New York, New Jersey down 2.8 percent. Los Angeles, Long Beach, Glendale, California minus 4.7. Chicago, Joliet, Naperville, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, minus 4.5. Houston, Sugarland, Baytown, Texas, minus 3.5. Atlanta, Sandy Springs, Marietta, Georgia, minus 4.3. Phoenix, Mesa, Glendale, Arizona, minus 5.4. Dallas, Plano, Irving, Texas, minus 2.7. Washington, Arlington, Alexandria, D.C., Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia, minus 1.5, Riverside, San Bernardino, Ontario, California, minus 6.0, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, minus 3.4, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Bloomington, Minnesota, Wisconsin, minus 3.8, San Diego, Carlsbad, San Marcos, California, minus 4.4. Santa Ana, Anaheim, Irvine, California, minus 5.2. Nassau, Suffolk, New York, minus 1.6. St. Louis, Missouri, minus 3.0. And these are more signs. Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, Florida, minus 4.0. Baltimore, Towson, Maryland, minus 2.9. Seattle, Bellevue, Everett, Washington, minus 4.6. Denver, Aurora, Broomfield, Colorado, minus 4.1. Oakland, Fremont, Hayward, California, minus 5.6, and 
Although the economy is starting to expand, businesses are squeezing additional work out of the workers they have, not hiring more. Businesses cut back very severely in the recession, trimming payroll size and cutting remaining, remaining workers' hours. The worst of this has passed, but what this means is that in the early stages of recovery, businesses can simply increase workers' hours to meet modest upticks in economic activity, explained one economist of Moody's Economy dot com. The good news is that the March employment report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics showed the largest net job gain since March 2007, but some of that can be due to the temporary hiring of the U.S. Census. And then there are coming layoffs, more layoffs. Many state budgets are having to cut workers, and many schools will have to be cutting their teachers. Improvement will be slow in the near term. And it will not be until perhaps late this and next year that job growth could start bringing about a more significant labor market recovery. That is, if everything goes well. The Adversity Index was created by MSNBC.com and Moody'sEconomy.com to track the economic fortunes of states and metro areas. Each month, the Adversity Index uses government data on employment, industrial production, housing starts, and home prices to label each area as expanding, at risk of recession, in recession, or recovering. Recovering doesn't mean recovered. It doesn't mean that an area's economy is above where it was at the beginning of the recession. It's just that the area has begun to dig its way out of the hole. The Adversity Index was designed to be a slow-moving indicator. It looks for sustained changes, so any one-month jump is likely to be smoothed out. This means the index is probably slow to call a beginning or end to a recession. The picture is brightest in housing starts. 306 metro areas showing gains from a year earlier. In the period ending in January, 288 er 280 areas showed housing growth up from December 214, November 171, October 115, September 97. And manufacturing is also improving somewhat. 203 metro areas showing gains from a year earlier. But anyway, what happens when the stimulus runs out? What happens when the tax credit for first-time home buyers runs out at the end of this month? That could put the economy back. Yes, it's very possible. In other words, if things aren't discounted, just like the automobiles, the automobile industry, the housing industry, then people become accustomed to discounts. The discounts are taken away. Anyway, these times are different from any other time. There's never been a time like this before, and there'll never be times like this again. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered. And these are more signs of the end times transition days. Transition is a continuing process. In other words, everything that must change, must change quickly or rapidly and for the better. These are more signs.